when we put ourselves in dishonor, they may claim the role of guardian, attorney, but at the end of the day, it is our consent that they require to make the process lawful. Even in a foreclosure matter, whilst we don't plea, and plea in a normal criminal matter is the time that we, not they, appoint the judge as the executor. Even in a foreclosure matter, the order at the end, the order of the eviction, is when we appoint the judge, typically, as the executor, and so are really requesting the judge on our behalf to ensure, enforce, that we obey our word in saying that we will leave. Even in the States, there is no eviction. The bailiff is effectively holding court at the front of the home and requires our consent in appointing them the right to have us evicted. So the system does not break this fundamental rule, even if the solicitors, the judges, the prosecutors and others claim they have no idea. Now, last week I showed you in plain sight the proof is there on the truth that every single court case at the root is a sacrament of penance on which is overlaid a constructive trust on which is then overlaid statute law. The bottom line is that the prosecutor, pro se cutis, is an entity that comes before us and claims to be in our own skin. And that's especially true with plaintiffs in civil cases. Now, this is an area that, again, I know people have had trouble with. How does this apply in civil, not just criminal? How does the bank come forward, the bank's attorney, and get us kicked out of the home? And it turns out that, again, this is going to be subject of more research by us and, and, and more support, that we have missed the significance of when we submit an application. Two key words there. Submit an application. Now, whenever we apply, whenever we wish to have a government service or purchase a appliance or property, we are asked to put in an application. Now, the word application is extremely important because applicatio or applicationis in Latin literally means the right of a patron to inherit a client's effects. Now, when you look up the definition of applicatio, what you find is that it is a transfer of rights the agreement of the other party to become the patron or most importantly to become the guardian the guardian now what we've been missing not everyone but but certainly when we've been talking in terms of, of Eucadia and, and trying to help you, what we've been missing is that when you go to court, we haven't recognised the fact that at any point you can appoint yourself or anyone else or any number as executors. But also, until you revoke the powers of guardianship, the powers of attorney and the powers and, and revoke your consent, from the original application requiring cause, requiring a competent notice, then that guardianship power is the thing that the credit card company, the attorney for the bank, the IRS or anyone else using to come after you. Now once you revoke that power of guardianship because you submitted an application. Don't worry about the promissory notes and, and all the other fraud that goes on with, with a home. That's, yes, it's a concern. Yes, it's wrong, but it's missing the whole point. When you sign that application, 
you, you granted them an extraordinarily powerful right that they can act as a guardian on that asset. And that's exactly what they're doing. But as a plaintiff, they're using that to come forward and say, as guardian, I am the pro se cutis. They are treating you as the minor. They are coming to court as a guardian. You must revoke that power. You must. And we will work, and I will certainly work to help in making sure that this is clear on the notes on the site. And then we have the executive letter. Now, there, there is an executive letter for the prosecution, which is not up on the site yet. There's a general one there for the, for the uh, clerk. And there needs to be one, obviously, when we're dealing with civil matters and you have the attorney of the plaintiff. Now, with any new information, and particularly as information is evolving, there is always a natural question, where is this going and how does it fit and is this going to stop and, and is it going to work? And that's why I've been very careful tonight to talk to you about the fact that there is evidence just by looking at the system that they have provided a form, albeit a pervert, perverted form, of, of remedy all the way through. Change the name, declare bankruptcy, power of executorship, and then in fact they are using this framework of the sacrament of penance as the underlying structure of all that they do every single time, over and over and over again. Now if someone says, you know, the, the, the role of the executor this is all fine, but I've spoken to a solicitor, or in fact, I've spoken to a judge, and they have no experience whatsoever. They've told me, flat stick, that this is true. Let me give you another piece of proof. Amicus curi. It's right throughout all legal precedents, maxims, statutes, and law. Amicus curi, friend of the court. That's what we think it is. But what is a curia? And it goes back to one of the original conversations I had with you all about the origin of the curia. The curia doesn't simply mean a court. The curia means a court of trustees and it also means the executives, single or plural. An amicus curiae, singular, means, for want of a better word, a fancy way of saying, I come to the court as the executor. If you are the executor, you are amicus curiae for that matter. If someone comes to the court as the executor, they come as the amicus curiae. So, once again, with these penny any people that play word games at us, in plain sight, there is historical evidence that that remedy has always been available and we haven't known how to use it. How do you use amicus curiae? Because it's there. They say it's there. Yes, there are friends of the court. But what does it mean? It means that you have correctly appointed someone the executor of the matter and it is a trust matter. And, and amicus curiae is meaning a friend of curiae that trust. So that whenever you're talking to a lawyer or clerk or judge or anyone, and they say, I don't know, I have no understanding, ignorance is no excuse because it is true, the words tell us the truth, the law tells us the truth. Your own laws tell us the truth. So I hope for all of you that have been frustrated by the system, this information in terms of the executors, this information in terms of uh, the remedy in their system is providing some insight. Now let's apply the executor issue back to our original ecclesiastical deed and this question, will we ever see remedy? We've sent them the pronunciation of the restitution, which is a higher form of rev revocation of guardianship and attorney. We've sent them our EDPs whether you've done it at a vital statistics or a court level or whether you've done it now at a national level, 
and there is no response, then there can be no question that they are failing their fiduciary duties. No question. Well, what does the statutes that we're still needing to spend more time on tell us about whether it be a, a, a collapsing through a bankruptcy type model or change of name type model is that there is precedent for them collapsing the trust but we can now appoint we can now justify and appoint someone or ourselves preferably someone else as the executor and move forward now and let them know we sent you uh, pronouncement of restitution we sent you our ecclesiastical deed you've done nothing okay you're denying you're lying you're doing all of that fine we've just appointed XYZ as the executor and now we're going to move forward so there is enormous opportunity for us to move forward on this in their system and through their own incompetence and lying they are going to give us the perfect opportunity. If they had done their job properly, we, we would find it greatly difficult to appoint the executor. But we have every right to appoint an executor. So in mind, in, in light of this, when someone asks, why did you drop off the uh, use of a bill? As we've been get, investigated this further and further, the end of the day is, is to perfect the remedy to obtain what is rightfully yours, to ensure the system recognises that you are competent. Not a free ride, but a, a mature relationship. You are not a child. It's time for them to recognise that people have woken up and they need to start dealing with it appropriately. And the fact is that the system as a concept has many positive things to it, but it has been run ragged. They have destroyed any right they have. They have become the most wasteful, incompetent people in the last 70 years, no question. And they can't simply hide anymore and say, we don't know. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't help you. So there's a lot of new information on that. And there's a lot of power now in understanding the power of, of the executor and as I say the amicus curiae so I hope this helps and as I mentioned too in foreclosures in understanding that every single court matter whether it be an IRS matter whatever it is it follows the same basic structure now in terms of updates uh, and cer certainly in terms of the financial system, I'll give you a um, couple more things and then we'll open up for questions. In terms of the, of the updates, the, obviously the writs and a number of sections of pages still need to be updated. And the only delay has been the work on this new information and the importance of digesting it, researching it. And again, I'm sorry, I know that so many of you have pressing matters, but it needs to be researched, it needs to be tested, and it needs to then be put available to you. So I know those things are outstanding. And on the money system, what's important about the money system? And I know that, that, that many are saying, well, you know, you've sp spoken about money. You've spoken about this system going to come available. You've spoken about the fact that there will be a currency and a means of exchange and a way of capturing your energy through the system. But money and currency is the heart of the beast. Absolutely the heart of the beast. And rushing forward without having some of the bedrock in place would be foolhardy. Now, the bedrock that I've been working on is the rules and the charters that will be updated in terms of the reserve banks and the types of products that are available and the power of this, and in particular, the way of defending the currency system of society. Now, why is this relevant? It's relevant because when the society starts to support its members in providing the credits from your account, reflecting the energy that you are performing, 
as well as your honour in being able to support and repay 